up, but we're gonna welcome up Mr. Bonson. Teamwork makes a difference. Always a crowd favorite, you know? Yeah. All right. Good morning, guys. Uh, let, let me open uh, with a quick word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, uh, just bless this time. Uh, I pray, Lord, that uh, your word is heard and that I can uh, accurately uh, give these kids uh, something to think about. Uh, Lord, bless our day. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. You guys uh, probably know why I was chosen to speak about teamwork, because uh, the, the reason I do what I do in coaching is because I love being part of a team. Uh, ever since I was a kid playing sports uh, through high school into college, uh, being part of a team um, was a great support system. And I had a, another advantage with that is most of the teams I was involved with came in being at a Christian school. So I had other Christians around me. So I'm not only going to talk about teamwork in regards to sports, but I'm going to talk about it in regards to how you walk as a Christian. Uh, anybody, raise your hand, anybody know who this is? Wow, not anybody in here. Wait, wait, love, who is that? Coach K, very good. Also, he's called Coach K because his name is Shasevsky, but you, if you saw the spelling of it, you would never know. It starts with a K, which is silent. So anyway, good job, love. And he is the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history, if you didn't know that. And uh, he coached Duke for, I think, something like 35 years. So recently retired. Um, I'm going to give you a little example about teamwork from him. Uh, good coaches, Coach Bond can tell you this, good coaches steal and borrow from other coaches. And so that's what I'm going to do right here. Um, Zephyr, where's Zephyr? Come on up. <clears throat> All right. So, um, have you ever punched someone in the face? Uh, I don't believe so. Good. I, I imagine that was the answer. But if you were going to punch someone in the face, how would you do it? Um, what would you do with your hand? I would probably go like that. Okay. All right. Very good. So let's hang. So, again, this is an analogy for basketball. How many? players are on the court in basketball. Does anyone know? Five. So this analogy that Coach K gives deals with basketball. So you have five fingers. If you're going to punch someone, okay, you can't punch someone like this, right? Or like this, or with your thumb, you're going to break your finger. The only accurate way or the, the right way we do it is to make a fist. And so when a team is working together, he makes the analogy that it is like a fist. Let's give Zephyr a round of applause. Thank you for coming up. <clears throat> so it is just like in sports, I believe it's the same with our Christian walk, that we need to do it. It is better to do it. The Bible actually tells us it's better to do it as a team when there's strength in numbers. So you can't be a Christian on your own. There's no support. And so that's what I want to talk about today. We can go to the next slide there. And there's some reasons in the uh, Bible that uh, tell us why it's better to do this together. Uh, the first is uh, it brings unity. Uh, Psalms 133.1 says, How good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity. All right. I think we all know what good means. Uh, what is pleasant? Anybody raise your hand. What does pleasant mean? Brandon? Nice, okay. Pleasing, pretty simple, right? Pleasing. This is an interesting verse that goes on after this in the second verse. It says, it is like, it's so good and it's so pleasing, it is like precious oil running down the beard of Aaron. Now, does anyone know who Aaron is? He is the brother of Moses, right? He must have had an epic beard, Right? Whenever I think of Aaron, I think of Mr. Klostra and this precious oil running down the beard. So that's how good and pleasing it is when you live together with brothers and sisters. And we're not talking about siblings, we're talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. So there's that unifying factor of when you walk as a Christian that you're doing it together. Next, it brings you strength. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So again, 
There is strength in numbers. That is the way that God made us and created us, that we can't function individually on our own. We need help. And that is why viewing Christianity as a team or viewing your church or whatever, however you want to think about it is where you're going to get your strength from. And then finally, a third thing, and maybe the most important, is what it says in Matthew 18.20. It says, for where two or three, these are the words of Jesus, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And so when you are gathered together with other like-minded believers, Christians, whether it's your youth group, whether it's your church, God says right here in this verse that he is there with you. His presence is there. That's why it's so important to go through your Christian walk, not on your own. You can't do that, and you're going to get the support you have from other Christians around you. So the next slide here, it tells us a little bit of some examples of how this happens. Um, when um, <clears throat> uh, There's some examples I want to just point out from the Bible. Another verse that I want to share is, is Proverbs 27, 17 that says, when two people, uh, two like-minded people are there, it's like ironing, sharpening iron. And uh, we obviously can, uh, when you have Christians that are maybe more experienced or older, they are going to hopefully help you and guide you. And it goes the other way as well. You can learn from those that are just new in the faith and, and the, uh, the, the reciprocal uh, uh, Things that will happen is like the Bible saying here that your iron will sharpen iron. Another example is uh, from the Bibles in the Old Testament is Nehemiah. Um, Nehemiah was put in charge of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, and he had to have a plan. And the plan was half the people were building the wall, while half the people were standing guard in, in case they were attacked. And this, again, gives us an example of how we can't do these things on our own. Another example from the Bible is in the New Testament from Paul. When he's talking to both the Romans and the Corinthians, he talks about your, your body and how it has many members. And what that means is you have your nose and your ear and your arms and your legs. All of these have specific functions, but they all make up one body. And he's comparing this to the church. We all, you know, have been to church, I hope, and you see that there are many, many different people in church, and they all have specific gifts but they are joined together in that one body of Christ together. And then finally, Jesus gives us uh, an example of how we can work as a team. He calls us in the Great Commission to go out and spread the good news of the gospel. And it's a shared mission that every Christian should have, and that's a common goal for not only the individual Christian, but the collective group of Christians throughout the world to spread the word the good word of Jesus Christ. So I want to leave you uh, with one final thing to think about. Um, actually, I'm sorry, two more things. One, uh, you know, when can you do this? And this is, I'm not a math person, as you guys know. I, I teach social studies, but this, is, this one's easy enough for me. Okay, one times one times one equals one. Okay, and the point is, is I want to give you some uh, examples of how you can apply this in your life when working as a team with other Christians. And this is what I suggest. The first one is that you do have an individual component that you should set up or try to set up a daily plan to be in the Word and to pray every day. That could be five minutes. It could be an hour. But that should be something that hopefully you can implement in your life on a daily basis. That's the first one. The second one is I encourage you to get involved in a smaller group of Christians together, whether that is a youth group or you have a mentor group that you're part of a school, but being involved in a smaller group, a Bible study, whatever it might be, that is the second one. And then finally, the third one is church, your church. Be involved with your church. Uh, so you have a daily, or I'm sorry, a weekly gathering on Sundays usually to gather with your church, other like-minded people that believe in Christ and have that same love. And when you put those all together, it equals this one that brings everything together as an individual, as a small group, and then as a big group with your church. So I think this is a way that you can hopefully uh, apply this in uh, your life by getting involved in those three 
aspects in being, again, in viewing your walk with the Lord and Christianity as, as a team, okay? You can't do it individually. And then I just want to conclude finally with um, a verse from Proverbs, okay? And um, this might be the most important to me as far as why it is so good and pleasing to do things together. And um, uh, you may or may not know this, I'm almost, sorry, Coach Will, I'm almost the oldest person on junior high staff here. Sorry, Coach. Um, he's got me by just a couple years. But anyway, so my point to being, and Coach can, uh, Coach can attest to this, I've been through a lot in uh, my life. I've, I've been a Christian for 47 years, and I've been through a lot and had a lot of experience in the church in small groups, in my own individual walk with the Lord. And I think the biggest reason that God gives us each other is for what Proverbs 17, 17. And what it says is that your brothers and sisters in Christ are there. They're born, they're there for adversity. So when you go through trials and you go through situations and problems, which you will, that's a lot of, unfortunately, happens in life. Um, it tells us right here that your brothers and sisters in Christ were born for you to help you get through those times of adversity, trouble, temptation, whatever it might be. Um, so I just, again, want to encourage you that to think about you being a believer in Christ is not just you. It's not a, just an individual thing. This is not an individual sport like tennis or golf. This is a team sport, and God has given others, other believers to you to help you out. They can be your peers, those that are your same age. They can be uh, your parents. They can be your teachers. But you should surround yourself with people on your team that are like-minded to you, that have that same love and belief in Jesus Christ. Um, and it's going to, I believe, help you get through these tough times that come about in life. And again, the Bible specifically tells us that we need others to help us get through our walk with the Lord. So thanks, guys, for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. And I just want to close again <clears throat> with a quick, uh, quick word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, this morning, and thank you for uh, the time that we could spend uh, looking into your word and hearing what it talks about in regards to teamwork and and being a uh, part of your uh, body and, uh, and the church. I just pray, Lord, that the, uh, everyone here will think about that maybe in a new way. And I just pray, Lord, that uh, we can all get more involved uh, in groups of like-minded people and youth groups and with our church. Uh, again, Lord, bless this day to everybody here. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Coach Bonson. Give him a round of applause. And I think as we lead into this time of worship, I just want to share like how much this even dovetails with what we talked a couple weeks ago with Miss Brandt talking. You guys can stand up. That's okay. Talking about humility. We live in a culture that is super individualistic. Like I can do this. It's all about me. But when you enter into a team, which you were born for, you submit yourself to the larger vision of the team and also the larger vision of the coach. You ask any coach in here, and we've got some amazing coaches in here, what makes your team special? And it's when they gel together, when they work together. Your teachers, your mentors, your faculty members, like we are a team also. And when he put that up there, we are born for adversity. Like we're... We're created to come together in those tough times. You have mentors and teachers who have been through a lot. And even though you don't see these things, uh, we come to each other for support in hard times, whether it's loss in our families, uh, different health things that we're going through, personal issues, like countless times of coming together as a team, uh, sharing, crying, and praying together. You don't have to do it on your own. As you enter into these years, like there are things that are going to come at you that you've never experienced before. And the beauty in that is you don't have to toughen up and just do it on your own. You have people around you who 
who love you, not only your teachers, but your students, your fellow students who have been there, who want to grow and be there for you in these tough times. So thank you for the great word, Coach, and uh, just join us in a, in a time of closure with this. Uh, this episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 through school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.